be. Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll be overclocking the Intel Core i9-10900K up to 6 GHz using Intel cryo cooling technology. Here's how we'll go about it. Before we get started, however, have a look at the hardware that we use. Along with the Intel Core i9-10900K processor, we will be using the Asus ROG Maximus 12 Apex motherboard, an Asus ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti graphics card, a pair of G-Skill Trident Z DDR4-4266 memory sticks, a Seasonic Prime 850 watt platinum power supply, the Elmore Labs P80DB2 LPC debug card, and of course, EK Quantum X water cooling favorite open bench table. Intel cryo cooling technology is touted as an intelligent sub-ambient cooling product that provides a new and improved overclocking experience. It takes advantage of the Intel thermal velocity boost feature, which aims to improve system performance by increasing the CPU frequency based on the CPU temperature. The cryo cooling technology is built around the thermoelectric effect. In the PC enthusiast space, it is best known as Peltier cooling. The main advantage of Peltier cooling is that it allows you to get sub-ambient temperatures. Lower temperatures means higher overclocks. While the technology has been around for over two decades in the enthusiast space, it still hasn't really found any footing in the mainstream market. So what makes Intel cryo cooling technology different then? First, the Intel cryo cooling technology offers a software solution to control the Peltier temperature. Second, the Intel controller also measures the humidity in the room. Thirdly, it maximizes the impact of the Intel thermal velocity boost feature. All things considered, the Intel cryo cooling technology is arguably the most well-rounded and advanced implementation of thermoelectric cooling in the enthusiast space. Now, let's get our overclock on. Okay, so before I show you the settings I used to achieve 6 GHz, a word of warning. Do not try these settings at home, please be careful. Enter the Extreme Tweaker menu. Set AI Overclock Tuner to XMP2. Set ASUS Multi-Core Enhancement to Enabled Remove All Limits. Set CPU Core Ratio to By Core Usage. Enter the By Core Usage submenu. Set Turbo Ratio Limit 0 to 60. Set Turbo Ratio Course 0 to 4. Set Turbo Ratio Limit 1 to 54. Set Turbo Ratio Course 1 to 6. Set Turbo Ratio Limit 2 to 52. Set Turbo Ratio Course 2 to 10. Exit the By Core Usage submenu. Enter the Thermal Velocity Boost submenu. Set Overclocking TVB to Enabled. Set 1 Core Active to 10 Core Active to Enabled. Set Negative Ratio Offset A for 1 Core Active to 10 Core Active to User Specify. Then for 1 Core Active to 10 Core Active, set Temperature A, negative ratio offset A and temperature B for additional minus 1x ratio to the following. 1 core, 10, 3, 55. 2 core, 10, 3, 51. 3 core, 10, 4, 47. 4 core, 10, 4, 43. 5 core, 58, 1, 68. 6 core, 54, 1, 64. 7 core, 62, 1, 72. 8 core, 58, 1, 68. 9 core, 54, 1, 64. 10 core, 50, 1, 60. Exit the Thermal Velocity Boost submenu. Enter the Tweaker's Paradise submenu. Set internal PLL voltage to 0.9. Set ring PLL voltage to 0.9. Set PLL bandwidth to level 1. Set eventual PLL termination voltage to 1.05. Exit the Tweaker's Paradise submenu. Enter the AI Features submenu. Set Package Temperature Threshold to 85. Set Regulate Frequency by Above Threshold to Enabled. Exit the AI Features submenu. Set CPU Core Cache Voltage to Adaptive Mode. Set Additional Turbo Mode CPU Core Voltage to 1.55. Go to the Advanced menu. Enter the CPU Configuration submenu. Enter the CPU Power Management Control submenu. Ensure CPU C states is set to enabled. Go to the Monitor menu. Enter the QFAN Configuration submenu. Enter the Chassis Fan Configuration submenu. Set Chassis Fan QFAN Control to Auto. Set Chassis Fan QFAN Source to T Sensor. Set Chassis Fan 2 Profile to Manual. Set the upper temperature to 50. Set the max duty cycle to 100%. Set the middle temperature to 30. Set the middle duty cycle to 60. Set the lower temperature to 25. Set the min duty cycle to 20%. Enter the boot menu. Set wait for F1 error to disabled. Then save and exit the BIOS. Set the Intel cryo cooling to unregulated mode. Wait until the CPU is sufficiently cooled down and you'll see the CPU running at 6 GHz. 
Now that we got all the way up to 6 gigahertz, let's have a look at the performance gain. We notice a couple of things. First, in heavy multi-threaded benchmark applications, regular high-end custom loop water cooling comes out on top. Second, our max out overclock using unregulated mode has the most wins across all benchmarks. A well-tuned cryo-cooled setup will give you more performance than a regular high-end water cooling system. Looking at the maximum CPU ratio table, you can see why the performance difference across all cryo-cooling systems isn't that large. Looking at the Prime95 small FFT with AVX comparison, we note that a configuration with power limits unlocked will fail unless we set other constraints. It's really satisfying to see all of the different technologies come together and eventually produce a 6 GHz overclock. Intel was quite smart to work with industry partners to bring a complete package to the market. The complete package of course includes the software, the cooling equipment, as well as the motherboard support. I look forward to seeing what Intel can do with next generations of cryo cooling and how it will enable us to extract more performance out of next generation CPUs. That's it for this video, till the next time.